All right, ladies and gents, hello and uh, welcome. This is going to be an interesting one. We just concluded a game with Ram, who's playing as the Spanish, and he chose to TC the corner on land, Nomad. You notice Ram here does not have a town center. Ram here is playing as the Spanish and also is sending villagers towards the corner. Now, I'd never seen Ram play before. Ram is a low of the legends. So I'm just curious if Ram likes to find a tight little spot for his TC. Or if it was just a coincidence last time. Okay, up against the edge of the map here goes red. And here goes red to the corner. Is this his strat? Is it does he do this every time? We might have found the new legend. Uh TC in the corner, I think, is incoming. Wait for it. Here come the villagers. They still haven't placed the TC. Whereas Blue's already building his. Red is really thinking about this. Hmm, do I want to TC the gold or do I want to TC the stone? TCing the gold against the edge of the map. Wow. Okay. So let's talk about this, all right? In the previous game, Red was in the exact same corner. The enemy, to be fair, played really well, scouted Red, and then Red was completely trapped. But at 780 ELO, which is their exact ELO, you have to imagine... Uh, come on, build the TC. See? Build the TC! Thank you. You have to imagine that it's going to be difficult for people to find someone who's in the corner. If you look at Blue's point of view, Blue over here... It's funny, he actually came from this corner with one of his villagers. But yeah, he doesn't really have any strong indicators to tell him where the enemy is. So, in Red's thought process... He wants to be as safe as possible and as far away from the enemy as possible. And the corner will always do that. And then for Blue, Blue has played this a bit more standard. And Blue has dropped the town center in an open area and started to create vills. And as you can see, Blue already has the vill lead. Granted, with Chinese, you do get three additional vills when your TC completes. But still, just getting that town center up means so much. And so while I know a lot of you guys are like, yippee, and getting really excited about RAM... The reality is, this is not a great thing for your economy, okay? Now, not all fun strategies have to be great for your economy. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that, like, you set yourself back in waiting till you get to the corner to build your TC. But this is exactly what Red did the previous time. Red also went for a house wall and palisade wall. Red's not interested in boars or anything. Red did in the previous game was tried to farm, but there's just not a lot of farm space either. <laughs> so it's really tricky. And okay, this is what you should do on Lands Nomad. Blue is scouting with a villager. I like this. Really good play from Blue so far. And Blue says, okay, I'm going to need some houses. We'll place the houses out here. Pretty soon, Blue's going to be finished with the turkeys, so might want some more. I might also think about taking the boar. Buzzkill T90. I'm not being a buzzkill because I feel like there's a lot of strategies where there's a lot of legends where people do interesting stuff. Like this, this only works if the enemy gets confused and doesn't know where you are. So there's an upside to it in that you can hide, but there's clearly a downside as well. That said, Blue has struggled a little bit with the Chinese start. And so the Vil count's not that insane. Now, Spanish truly are one of the best civilizations for nomad starts. Because you can build your TC faster, because it's normally fast castle, and if you're going fast castle, you can get away with conquistadors. So Red, with a very systematic approach here, Monday? is uh, is going to drop, or sorry, is going to collect the goats and is sending in one by one. Now, I want to talk about something that someone in chat just mentioned. Now, though, said Red's vills were more dispersed at the start. So... It looks like that, and I could always go back at the end, but the way things are normally situated with Nomad is you've got, like, a triangle. So, like, one, two, or maybe it was, like, one, two, three or something. I, I forget the exact location of them. And so the best thing you can do is kind of meet your villagers in the middle and TC somewhere around there. That'll mean you get your TC up as fast as possible. So yeah, it looked super dispersed because two of his villagers were really far away from this corner, whereas one might have been a little bit closer to it. 
But this is live. I'd like to point that out. I'm not watching a recorded game. The previous game we saw was interesting. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for Red. And Red tends to play Lands Nomad a lot based on the profile. So this is happening live. Varkneck over here is, is has the better overall Civ, I'd say. Has had the better overall start. And is playing it more standard. Like if you wanted to be, let's say you were 750 ELO and you wanted to be a pro. You would probably try and play like Blue is playing in some ways. Now, granted, I wouldn't suggest gold at this time, but that's another conversation. Hmm. All right. Well, hey, I want to sign it. Let's try that again. I just want to say thanks to everyone who showed up so far today. Also, of course, thanks to people who might be watching in the future. But uh, support and positivity around the community has been really awesome the last few weeks. So thank you, guys. Happy New Year to you. Both players are idling their town centers at the moment. It's nice to see that every now and then, you know. Give the town center a rest. That way the town center's not working all the time. Give the town center a day off as well. Uh, I also want to say thanks for the sub count. We're very close to 400. Actually, I think we're over 400. I have to check. Can I check now? Do I have it now? Anyways, the sub count's really awesome. 100% of the subs actually goes directly towards me on the platform, too. So thanks for considering that if you've done that. And thanks for the stars, too. We've had this crazy thing with the stars recently where, like, if enough people contribute with stars, uh, Facebook actually gives me bonuses, which was, like, I didn't even know was a thing. That's been nice, too. Happy New Year's, Jade. Thank you. Movable, what's up? And, okay, here we've got Red, who's dropped a mill and is going to take the deer now. Wait a second. Didn't Red... Go 15 pop view lage in the previous game. Because remember, Red got housed at 15 pop. And we were like, oh no, Red forgot to make houses. But then we realized Red wasn't producing vills. So Red didn't even know it was housed. Monday? Is this a build order? Is this the way Red likes to play every game? I mean, it's too coincidental. I, I think this has to be a plan for Red. Okay. 15 villagers and then going feudal age must be Red's build order. Meanwhile, over here, we've got some farms. We've had boar. We've had deer. We've had gold. Blue's on the way up with more villagers. Like, blue is the much better player. There's just no doubt in my mind. The red is also on the way to feudal age. Day two with your new baby. Thanks for the content. Ross, best of luck with all that, man. It's funny, someone else today, I forget who it was in chat, was like, I have a four-week-old, and every day we listen to your content. <laughs> some, like, imagine some toddler, like, way I want to watch more Age of Empires, way in, like, two years. You have no one but yourself to blame, I warned you, okay? Wait a second, I've heard viewers say that I put them to sleep. What if I do an even better job at putting whiny babies to sleep? <gasps> oh, what if, like, this is my new business model? This is how we retire. Yes. Okay. So I'll, like, I'll wait till my whole community's old enough and they're all adulting and whatnot and got, like, a bunch of toddlers. And then I immediately make all my videos paid to listen. I'll be, like, 25 bucks to listen to one 20 minute video. And I know you guys are like, T90, 25 bucks seems really extreme. Yeah, but have you ever had a baby cry in your ear for like two hours? Parents will do crazy things to shut their kids up. I mean, in the nicest of ways. I'm joking, by the way. This is this is a joke. Blue scouting right now. I like that. I had nothing else to talk about, so I decided to make dumb jokes. Story of my life. Also scouting over here with the villager. I don't mind that either. I think a really good strat to go for on this map is to go for a scout rush. Um, because you can then just scout the map. You don't necessarily need to rush with it. Okay. Got the horse collar upgrade. Also getting the wheelbarrow upgrade. Chinese have technologies that are, I think, 20% cheaper in feudal. Oh, no. I think it's 15. Excuse me. And plus, there's more villagers working right now. Over here for Ram. Kind of looks like Ram wants to go fast castle. In the previous game, we eventually saw a stable. All right. Parents don't do anything to shut their kids up in my experience. They just ignore them and keep talking to each other while the rest of us suffer 11. Well, I guess it depends on the parent. 
all, all parents are a little bit different in how they approach things. My father had very interesting- Oh my god, what are these walls? Holy crap. Okay, so Blue's like, we need to stone wall. Stone wall is a good idea. And then he placed so many stone walls that he ran out of stone. And said, hmm, how do we solve that problem? Let's finish it with palisades. The Great Wall of China from Varknik over here. Who apparently is just going to research every technology because he's now getting men at arms. Actually, I would do a horrible job of putting children to sleep because I occasionally scream. I've had my viewers complain about waking them up from naps before. But yeah, this isn't exactly... Um, oh no, I actually have a funny story for you. While we wait to see what Blue does... So, I really liked to have McDonald's chocolate milkshakes when I was growing up. And thinking back, we had McDonald's milkshakes a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. And we always had sometimes like two milkshakes on one drive. If it was like a three-hour drive for a family vacation or whatever. And I remember bringing that up to my mom later on in life when I was trying to get healthier. I was like, Mom, you gave me so many milkshakes. No wonder I love sugar. And she looks at me and goes, it was the only thing that shut you up. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? I thought you did it because you loved me. And because I really wanted a milkshake. And you're my mom. And you're nice. And he, she's like, yeah, I do love you. But man, those 15 minutes of silence were amazing for the family. Because <laughs> uh, they used to always try and play the quiet game. They'd be like, hey, Tristan, I have an idea. Do you ever play the quiet game? And I'd be like, no, what's the quiet game? A quiet game is a game where the person who's quiet the longest gets a prize. I'm like, what's the prize? We're like, you'll have to see if you win. I would never win. And then they, they even tried to, like, find uh, words that were similar to quiet. Um, like the, um, Tristan, do you ever play the silence game? No, I never played the silence game. Is it like the quiet game? It's exactly like it, but you get a bigger prize. My whole family just spent their whole lives trying to shut me up. That's pretty much it. Now, in the previous game, Red did not have a safe stone in the corner. So remember, Red went for knights, but couldn't go for a castle because there was no stone. There is actually stone here. Do you guys want to hear my favorite parenting story? Granted, I'm not a parent, so I can't relate to all these things. But I think you guys will get a kick out of this one, okay? Um, so I was watching home videos. So we had these old recordings from the 90s uh, on VHS. And when I was a teenager, I'd watch all the old recordings of my family. Um, and there's some funny stuff in there, right? And so my buddy and I uh, were watching our home videos one day in the summer. And we found one where, uh, like, the family's hanging out in the living room. I think my brother had the camera or whatever. And then baby Tristan, who's like maybe six months. I don't know the exact age because I don't know how to like, I can't tell when looking at a baby. Sorry, they're all the same. Um, baby Tristan was laying on his back in the middle of the living room floor, okay? Above baby Tristan was a lamp. And the, the lamp was one of those with the pulley chains. Most lamps have that. You know what I'm talking about. A little dangly chain to turn the light on and off. You pull the chain. Attached to the lamp was a was a uh, thing of yarn, and that went down, that hung down, and then it was attached to my wrist, which was then up in the air. Right? This seems really weird. And so there I lay with yarn attached to my arm, my right arm in the air, moving around, and I would like move it, and it would move the chain, and it would make a noise, and I thought that was the funniest thing. And there was also like a separate little clip where like my dad would attach my right arm to a balloon. Just let me lay in the middle of the freaking floor and attach my arm to stuff. Okay. I asked my dad about it. My dad's like, well, but I'm right handed. And that when I, I wanted to teach you how to throw football and throw frisbee and do all these things. And it was my greatest fear that you would grow up to be left handed and I wouldn't be able to teach you. So I figured that was a great way to strengthen your right arm. <laughs> and it's actually brilliant. Like, it's actually brilliant as Blue continues to wall. I think it's hilarious. I mean, also, I feel like present day, if you, like, walked into your friend's house and their kid was had their arm attached to, like, a balloon or a lamp, you would maybe be like, uh, this is a little weird. You know, like, 
In 2021, or what are we, 2022, we'd be like, what's wrong with this person? But it worked out. I'm right-handed, so... Anyways, here comes the stone walls. This is a very relaxing game. A very passive game, and that was the type of game that Red wanted. And Red is now going to drop a town center between this stone and the gold here, and has some knights. Has no clue where the enemy is. But you could say the same for Blue. He doesn't know where Red is. And has decided to stonewall just in case pressure comes in. Alright. I'm looking for a DJ for my wedding. Do you think Hardy would do it? No, he's a full-time editor for me, man. He can't go DJing for weddings. What are you talking about? No, I will not sing at your wedding. <laughs> oh, God. Corey says, usually people want their kids to be lefty for pitching reasons. Yeah, the thing is, is my dad didn't know any of that. My dad was my... Uh, I, he tried, let's put it that way. He was our soccer coach when I was a teenager, like 13 or 14. Just like our local team. And on the drive to the game, he would always ask me what positions we would play players. He'd just be like, what do you think we should do? And I'm like, Dad, I'm 13. <laughs> you're, you're 45. Like, Actually, how old was my dad? I don't know. My dad is actually uh, very close to 70 right now. I don't know if anyone else has uh, parents around that age, but most of my friends have parents like in their 50s. And my dad's very close to 70. He's still rocking it. Okay. Um, holy mega boom from Blue. Blue's dropping a town center here. Blue's dropping a town center here and here. So we're going to have four TCs. Blue is now fully walled. I was keeping an eye on this. I thought maybe Blue would keep this open. Um, I'm not sure if Blue knows what he wants to make. Because at one point he got the men at arm upgrade. He made archers. And then there's a stable over here that someone's eventually going to build. But Chinese are the sieve of options. That's an important thing to note here. Now, Red is trying to find the enemy right now. Has not been able to do so. If you were to click to the corner, your unit would get all confused because there's no path to get there. So let's see if Red maybe finds the walls. But Blue's got a sick empire. No, I agree. And yeah, okay, now sees the walls, Red. And Red should have an idea that someone's over there. And he's like, ah, a fellow corner picker. All right. And he's got all this respect and pride. And he, 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 normally, you, you want to hate the enemy, but you can't help but just love the enemy when they pick the corner like this. I love the way Blue is booming. He's maybe gone a little overboard with queuing up bills in each TC, though. But okay, never mind. He's just going to buy food for the other TC. The guy's got 16 vills in queue. That's a lot of villagers queued up. But he just wants to make sure that all the TCs are producing vills. And so I expect him to pull way ahead of Red. And Red's now got army that does nothing. Unless he wants to maybe make siege as well. His army will really not accomplish anything. Red, happy with the corner. I am curious if Red will maybe drop a castle. As we see more stables, I'm thinking that maybe a forward castle drop, like right here. Uh, that would allow you to break in. Yep, okay, he sees the walls. Yeah, this is a juicy spot for a castle. Drop a castle, shoot down the walls, and then pressure. But more stables instead of more town centers tells me we will see more aggression from red. We shall see. Like, with the positions right now, that is the play for red. Because otherwise, investing into more knights is useless. And you're on two TCs. And red's going to drop a castle here instead. Oh, it's a little passive. I think if they're going to play it like this, you should probably make a lot more villagers. Blue is pulling way ahead right now. We'll see how blue uh, balances it, though. Like Blue's got quite a bit of stone and gold coming in, but might need to get more food at some point. Was that a Ninja Turtles reference? Was what a Ninja Turtles reference? This is sad, but I lived a sheltered life and I didn't really watch a lot of Ninja Turtles. I feel like I would have really liked Ninja Turtles. I don't know what age it was where everyone liked Ninja Turtles. But I, I remember watching it. It wasn't even that my parents didn't let me watch it. Like everything else in my life. Um, 
But I remember like trying to watch it and not really enjoying it, so I think I was a little too old. I did like though, if you ever went to the arcade, I'd love to play the Ninja Turtles game. And arcades. Oof, what a thing of the past. But but yeah, um you'd have like you could choose any of the four Ninja Turtles. I forget how many quarters they had to pay at Chuck E. Cheese to play that one, but I loved it. All right. Very, like, calm, relaxed state of mind for Blue. He's pumping out vills. He continues to buy tons of food. I think what Blue needs to do is he needs to start farming. Okay, it bothers me when I see someone spending so much gold on buying food. It's, it's really a good thing to do in some situations when booming. But if you want to improve, I think you should definitely focus on pulling some villagers off of wood and other resources to farm. Hmm. Not allowed to watch TV, but putting two milkshakes to trip in you. Occasionally, yes. Anything to shut me up. <laughs> wow, good upgrades here for red. Considering blue doesn't have a single blacksmith upgrade, this is crazy. If there were no walls, this could be a problem for blue. Yeah, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't allowed to, to do quite a bit of things that now I'm just, I mean, I also thought it was ridiculous when I was young. Don't get me wrong. Especially when I was a teenager, we had big run-ins on stuff like that. But, uh, but now I'm just like, man. And it, the nice thing is, is I get to catch up on a lot of stuff, but then there's other things that I, like, don't want to catch up on. Like, do I want to, like, watch Rugrats? No. <laughs> I, they didn't like me watching Rugrats, because, uh... The one person was mean, and that was going to turn me mean, apparently. Joke's on you, Mom and Dad. I am mean. Ha! Screw you, chat. Okay, I'm just trying to prove a point here. Nothing serious. Again, Blue is taking advantage of Chinese and just getting everything. Bloodlines for knights. Do we have knights? Nope, but we might. Uh, thumb ring. Do we have a lot of archers? Nope, not really, but we might. Another castle. Town patrol. 92 villagers. You do, though, have Ram on the way to the Imperial Age. Oh, yeah, VeggieTales was... Veg I will maintain, while I didn't have a lot of options for television growing up in a religious household, I will maintain that VeggieTales is freaking amazing. Especially some of the songs. I will still occasionally sing them to this day. Probably because I've been brainwashed, but still... Oh, where is my hairbrush and cheeseburger? Oh, top tier. Don't even get me started on lips. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just don't look it up, okay? Just don't do it. Just just say yes, T90, I agree. Um. So, like, here's where it gets interesting. Blue sat back so defensively in the corner. Or, or red did, sorry. And then... Didn't really have a crazy aggressive follow-up. I mean, if this game goes on for a while, things might be fine, but being behind by 40 vils is pretty insane. Yeah, thank you for agreeing, guys. Thank you for agreeing. Blue did expand up to 28. Now it's going to be around 30 farms. We all know 37 farmers is the best build order. The true T90 fans know about the 37 farm build order. I was really happy people in the comments brought that up. I mean, eventually you need to expand out of here, but not really. Not for a while. There's so many resources in here. As we'll have relic number one come in for Ram. And also treb number one for Ram. Guys, <laughs> I, I am concerned. Oh, okay, he's on the way to Imp now. I was going to say, I am concerned that Blue isn't on the way to the Imperial Age yet. As we're going to see barracks. We're going to see more archer ranges. You do need to pick something to make here, Blue. The economy side and the upgrade side is fine, but you are going to have to commit to a unit. Usually two units, so. That's true. It's 37 farms with Vikings. <laughs> okay, upgrades on the way. We have the Great Wall, and it's actually being utilized. Great Wall is a relatively new tech if you consider Chinese have been in, in the game forever. But it'll actually give more HP. I think it's the towers, walls. I'm not sure if it's buildings. Let me actually keep an eye on the castle. I don't think it's castles to... No. 
No, it's just, I think, just walls and towers. That added 900 HP to that wall. Cavalier's almost in here for Ram. And if he can get the final Imp Armor upgrade, there's definitely a chance here. Now upgrades are coming in for Blue. Does Blue have just one Blacksmith? Okay. He's left it a little late, but he is clicking everything. But didn't even complete the Feudal Age upgrades yet. We'll have to go through the Castle Age upgrades, and then we'll be an Imp. So we'll need those too. But when you have 40 more Vils, you can afford to make some mistakes. Guys. What is Red doing a good job of here? He's not trickle trebbing. Now, I suggest going in with four trebs when you go for a surprise. I would not suggest three. I think four is the magic number. But at least he didn't show up with one and give Blue time to, to react. The problem for Red is more so lack of eco. The problem for Blue is almost too much focus on eco. As we now see Rocketry and Elite Chukunu. But Blue doesn't necessarily want to make Chukunus. Oh, never mind. Blue has 25 Chukunus queued up. I'm wrong. Okay, the Trebs can't see that castle. If they did, they would take it out easily. You could honestly use the Trebs to take out a tree and just run in. Red's got 95 pop. We now see the final armor upgrade. We also see ballistics. That'll help the castles. So I think what he's expecting here is he's expecting the enemy to run in after the Trebs. I don't know if he's really thinking it through like that, but yeah, another castle. Okay. A blue is... No, he's producing Chukunu out of two castles. Two out of his, like, six castles. I guess four castles. Architecture now, which gives you even more HP on everything. Uh, actually, I think it's just... I always forget if architecture affects walls. Forgive me. I think architecture affects... No, I think it's only buildings, right? I don't think masonry affects the walls either. But I could honestly be wrong on that. I, I never research masonry or architecture for walls. I always research it for the castles. And I know it affects other buildings too. Is it just me or is the voice a bit off today? I sound fine, I think. But you know how it goes. You always sound different in your own head. <laughs> now we have a lot of upgrades coming in. And Red ha has given Blue the time. Red is just sitting here. Like, maybe Red doesn't want to attack at all. Maybe we're wrong. Red is now going to make Conquistadors as well. It hurts me so much when they get a big army and wait. Yeah, so my tip is, if you want to wait, play it like blue. That's basically everything that I want to get across here. Waiting is fine, but then boom. Then have like 120 vils. Because if you're waiting with 70 vils and the opponent has more eco, you're going to have some problems. Okay, we will have our first attack here in the game. Treb's firing on the wall. A little unfortunate for Red. Um, by the way, architecture didn't affect the walls. But a little unfortunate for Red that he didn't move forward to try and see if there was a castle there. The Chukunu are not fully upgraded. They're still missing some upgrades, but Rocketry's in... And also, Blue is prepping Halb, so Blue could always go for Halb's. I think Red is dead. There's no way that this is possible for Red. There's no way. See? Only if Blue were to run underneath all three castles and not run away with his units. Shenlong. Blue is, seems very happy to make use of the Chinese defensive capabilities. Maybe a little too defensive, though. Like, like technically, if Red were to just not run in... And then red could have maybe expand the economy for long enough. It could be fine. Get the relics. You know, two relics already. Maybe get more. Blue is expecting a big, big push here. Dropping those guard towers. They could be keeps. Let's actually look at the research percentage. Uh, where is that? Research count. Look at that. So many more researches from Blue. All right, he will leave the walls to go make a gate. I think that was probably unintentional. <laughs> no offensive siege for Blue. 
And Red's gonna send in one unit just to see what's up. And he's like, oh, a castle, okay. That was really well done from Red. Who at this point should never take an engagement before Paladin. Now, Conquistadors are one of the most confusing units to upgrade in the game because it's on a horse. Do you think cavalry armor, like this here, would affect it? But no, actually, they're, they're cav archer class. So, so being cav archer class, the archer armor gives them their armor. But also what's tricky is since they're gunpowder, they're not affected by bodkin and all the other things archers are affected by, so... Okay... Chukonu... Arbalest Castle could go down. I think Blue is really scared about this, and Red is going to take the engagement. I honestly think this will be a good engagement for Blue, but Blue will end up losing the castle. Actually, that's a pretty good engagement for Red. What am I talking about? You can see one of their computers is breaking throughout this fight. You can see the stutter. <laughs> the difference here is that Blue has tons of army in Q. He's got 70 halbs in Q. So he's going to have plenty more army in a bit. And Red is, is actually holding here. He actually gets the clear up and a little bit of a moral victory. And if he can continue to push forward and take out some of these keeps... Maybe just maybe Blue will feel too worried about the future and will just resign. Camping the Trebs. Oh, yeah. You take out those houses. Camping the Trebs. Keeping them protected. And Blue is a little worried at the moment. How many barracks does he have? Six? I mean, it's not too bad. He's only producing out of five of them. Or three of them, I guess. Oh, no. He's producing out of all of them now. Okay. Having Elite Conquistador would be really helpful. Having Paladin would be really helpful. Feels like if Red ever ventures out too far away from the castle protection, this is going to be an issue. So maybe dropping another castle here would be good too. Blue does not have full infantry upgrades. We now have Elite Conquistador on the way for Red as he sits behind the walls, which is nice. Blue can fire over top the walls, of course. But the Kongs are pretty well protected now. The problem for Red is that keeps actually take quite a bit of time to take out. And, you know, with a few more trebuchets, maybe it wouldn't matter as much, but... Have all these volleys fire and just now take out one keep when there's so many more means that I think Red's going to have to back up pretty soon. We'll have a Elite Conquistador, which seems like the go-to unit right now for him. That's still lacking the armor, which I think will be an issue, and he's going to have to stay away from these towers. But Red is doing this! Red is actually doing this! This is a crazy game! He wasn't ready before. Remember when he was waiting and people were frustrated? He wasn't ready, but... He seems to really be focusing well now. And he has really good army control. The blue is just kind of throwing everything he's got into the meat grinder here. A little uh, misplay there from Red to have his units out of position. But yeah, there you go. Oh, man, this is huge. What is happening right now? Blue still has the greater economy. Blue still has insane resources. But Blue is getting pushed right back. Cavalier Conquistador. I used to play primarily Spanish against AI. And I would just make pretty much the same composition. Only I would always make a few missionaries to heal my units too. I, I used to love to go Paladin with Spanish because you don't have to spend gold on blacksmith upgrades with the Civ. And I used to feel like that was, you know, really strong for Paladins because Paladins cost a lot of gold, so you save gold. Okay, Red wisely backs up, sends Cavalier in. And I guess it's just going to pick away at the towers over here. And guys, Blue is, is just getting destroyed by this army comp. I will eventually talk about what more he could do. Blacksmith upgrades is the one thing that he really needs. Truthfully, Spanish are very hard to face up against. And Red's army control is nuts! Pulled back the cav to the hill. Knew the conquistors were going to be there in support. Let's, let's see if I didn't jinx him here. He's now running into some keeps. The lack of bracer has hurt Blue so much. Cavalier will do fine. Conquistador's not so fine because they're lacking some of the armor. Okay, now Blue's has thought to himself, what's going wrong here? What could I do more of? 
And Blue is going through another round of Blacksmith upgrades. So now Bracer's in. So now the ranged units are fully upgraded. Oh no, he still doesn't have chemistry. So not quite fully upgraded. Have you ever seen a KD like this in Loey the Legends? This is, this is nuts. The red is on a rampage right now. I think if he were to research the final armor upgrades here and get Paladin, it's certainly over. But there's still a chance for blue as, as red takes another amazing fight. It still feels like there's a chance for blue if he can just group his units up. The units that red has are stronger units. And you can see the cost of them there in the value. So if that's the situation you're in, you need to have more units. And look at red. He pulls back the halps into the conquistador fire. Blue is just so freaking panicked. What bothers me for blue is that he went... Like, earlier, he had Elite Chukunu. He doesn't have Chukunu. He's boxed himself in. He does have wood over here now. But he's even running out of wood on this side. The red is just methodically continuing this pressure. Every time he needs uh, Conquistadors, he just goes here and makes more Conquistadors. Anytime he needs more, uh, more Cavalier, he just pulls back and makes the Cavalier. And he's not looking at his eco at all. He doesn't have any need for that. Okay, this will be an interesting fight now. Blue should not fight right now. If you fight right now, I think you lose the game. Back up more. Be more patient. Do not fight here. And also, the walls are kind of working against him, I think. Uh, he takes the fight. This is what I wanted to see from Red a long time ago. As you're pushing forward with Trebs, drop a castle on them. And then it forces them to take an engagement. Or it gets a whole lot worse for them positionally. As someone's PC is still melting here. Paladin's on the way. The castle's going to go up. The keep goes down. And with that castle being up, I don't see how Blue pushes this back. I mean, he needs Trebs now. And Blue just doesn't really know what to make. He's now going to make two-handed swordsman because he's like, well, what else do I do? Maybe he misclicked it. I don't know. What else do I make? I everything I make dies. But, ladies and gents, it's still 30 army for red. He still has the same three trebs. He can mo move them forward. And he's soon going to have the paladin. Yeah, blue does have access to wood, but he's spending so much of it. On archers and on halves, it's so expensive. And now he's like, well, shoot. I have food, so let's try and go light cav. He's trying everything. Light cav only costs food, so it makes sense. Still not giving him an answer to this push. 37 farms for red. 37 farms. Don't make any more farms, red. Holy crap. The meme continues. Or, sorry, excuse me. The, the best build order in the game continues. To people who are confused, by the way, you need to watch the Fatslaw video. And Blue is just so stressed. When you get stressed, you trickle. You stream in units. That you, you probably don't want to be streaming in and it tends to snowball on you. No, he's at 38. Oh, he's improved upon it. Where's Where are the farmers at? I hope they die. Can someone raid him? Never mind. D don't even get excited. Check this out. So these conks, 100 kills. 15 kills amongst these paladins. Of course, a lot of those are new. But 100 kills to this group of conquistadors. The Trebs, um, oh, I guess I don't have data for the Trebs like I do everything else. But it says the group of Trebs actually had one kill. <laughs> they must have killed a farmer. It's kind of funny. But yeah, seeing what the Kongs have done is, is incredible. Killing 12 villagers and the rest being military. And now he's getting the armor. I, I still don't know if he knows this armor actually affects his Kongs, but he's getting it because it's remaining maybe. Yeah, like, he's getting this as well. They killed a goose, did they? Interesting. He's back to 37. He's back to 37. Wait a second. She's going to be 38, isn't she? No, I think they should still be treated as farmers. Ah, oh, man. Okay. 37 because they're building the farm. Ah. That was close. 
Well, this is Blue's last chance. His last attempt. Last attempt to try and break this and push him back. It's funny, we made a lot about Red choosing the corner. But Blue... He set up shop here. He was ready to sit back into his corner. And it really is not looking good now. Look at the army values here. Look look at the HP. It's insane. Red could micro this so poorly and still clean up the fight. And honestly, he is kind of microing it poorly. In that situation, I think you just let your units engage and you'll clear everything. But he wants to fall back to the castles. And he'll clear this. Double castle fire. Make it triple castle fire on the front. Still has the same three traps. Could go after the castles, after the keeps. Four to one KD. And Varkonek probably can't believe this. In many ways, Blue completely outplayed Red. Economically, completely outplayed Red. But what Blue didn't know was what to choose, what to make. And frankly, Blue's unit control has suffered because of that. I think you could just say that Blue's unit control wasn't as good. But I think more than anything, he didn't know what units to have. And that was the issue. And then when he starts to fall behind, of course, he's going to have some big problems with unit control. Um, oh, close to sniping the Treb there. We'll see if Red will actually complete this castle. But it, with only three Trebs, it's going to take some time. But there's no way you kill this army now. There's just no way. Wow, really crazy game from Red, who apparently always does this. He always plays Land Nomad, and he always chooses a corner. I don't think it's... Um, I don't think it's necessarily unique enough where he becomes a legend. But he's a low-evil legend, certainly. Like, this will make the Legend series, of course. Legend of the Corner Pickers. <laughs> uh, someone's like, I'm a nose picker. What about that, T90? Just kidding, just kidding. Man, Blue really... Like, he could have raided Red so many times. Look how exposed Red's economy is. But he's been so focused on this. And Red is now forcing him to focus on this because he's continually attacking. What unit comp does counter Paladins and Tonks? It, it's too much power on the field. Yeah, it's a time thing, right? So if Blue would have pressured instead of sitting back and dropping towers everywhere, Blue would have been fine. But honestly, like, let's see. Chukunu Camel. Elite Chukunu and Heavy Camel would wreck this. I, I think so, anyways. So it's not like it's not a possibility. But if you add Skirms, Skirms die to Paladin, even though they do okay against Kong. And then if you add Halb for the Paladin, Halb dies to the Conquistador. So what you really need to counter this composition is no trash units. You need double gold units as well, which is obviously easy, easier said than done. Yeah, also Halb and Chukunu would work really well. But do you think what Blue made? He made two-handed swordsman, skirmisher Halb, Chukunu, Arb, light cap. He didn't really know what to make. He was game planning on having more resources and just sitting back. And it's a tricky approach when up against this composition. And again, I think Red's unit control has been really good. Way better than I was ever expecting based on the earlier stages of the game. Because he wasn't aggressive at all. But he wasn't aggressive until he was aggressive. <laughs> and when he started to really focus on the push, and then it really started to look convincing. Alb Skirm would be fine if enough numbers. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess you know, you're, you're not wrong on that. But again, like, Halbs get wrecked by Conks, Skirms get wrecked by Paladins, so there's also Micro involved there too. A Skirm is 35 HP, a Paladin has 180 HP, a Halb has, what is it, like 50 HP? Is there a Halb around somewhere? Um, or is it 60? 60 HP and a Conk is 90, so... And the damage output is just so much less for Trash, so you would need to, need to have, like, 100 military. Red's taking gold over here. And Blue's got camels now. But Blue, and I'm not sure if this will matter hugely, but he doesn't even have full armor yet. I mentioned that with Blue. He was focused so much on the economy. And then he added the buildings, but he was really late to upgrades. Which is sad to see with Chinese. Now he knows he just clicked the upgrade. 
He knows he probably doesn't have it, but he's going to try and take this fight anyways. Because I think he doesn't see how many there are behind this. And oh boy. Oh, the camels are going to die. Camels actually do an incredible job against paladins and against conks if they get in close enough. The main issue is just, are they going to survive against the gunpowder and against the castle fire? Yeah, camel's not a bad play. How many camels are you going to lose, though? Yep, you're going to lose all the camels. That was still a horrible fight. And red can still run forward to take out more castles and more buildings. Also, there is a relic in this monastery, and there's a relic behind the monastery. So if red wants to take that, red can take it. Red just continues to run back, grab some conks, run back, grab some paladins. It's a pretty simple game plan from here, and then another forward castle. This is so good! This is so good from Red. A great way to control the area, um, or, or, or just continue your push, is to drop castles to control the area, is what I wanted to say. Especially if the fights are 50-50, and you think the opponent's going to wait for a few more units, drop the castle, because then they have to come out to try and stop that. Where is blue going right now? It's funny how Blue's people have only left the walls when they've been forced to leave the walls. Like, it's clear to me that Blue didn't think about this ahead of time, right? There's still only one town center out here, and it's not even complete yet. It's funny, with that tower, it almost looked like there'd be a king in there, like this would be regicide or something. Resign, Blue! Resign! I don't want to be mean. But I think you've got to accept it here. You've got no food. Like, Blue just clicked the Cavalier upgrade, and we'll only have three of them. There's just, you just don't have an eco anymore. And your buildings are going to go down. You won't be able to rebuild those. Here's another castle from Red. You won't be able to protect your villagers if Red ever makes it out of here. And there's now actually a hole here, so Red could always run around. I think Blue will go for one last engagement. Well, actually, Blue can't even make halves right now. <laughs> it's funny. The reason Blue didn't have food is because the halves are in queue. But because of lack of houses, Blue is unable to do anything with that. Red's looking for him. And Red will see this. But yeah, um, Red, Red is going to finish Blue off, and Blue will maybe have one more go before he ends up resigning. <laughs> now, I wouldn't say I'm bored now, but oh, oh my god. Oh my god, how could I be bored? Three villagers from blue trying to escape over here and happens to find red's economy. Now, what will they do? This guy's like, hold up, what? He immediately stops work despite being paid by the hour. He's like, what? Let me clock out real quick. <laughs> Kill one farmer, please, right? Well, here come the conks. So Red knows Blue is over here. Blue is going to try and wall it up, but won't have the time. These three villagers are still just hanging out. The buildings are all going down. The houses will be a continuous problem for Blue because all of his houses were in here. So Blue still can't make anything. Like Blue still is trying to make Cavalier, but still cannot. As we'll see, the houses scrambling up over here now. That's what these villagers should do, is they should make houses. There's a lot of different types of AoE players. There's AoE players who resign too early. There's also AoE players who resign too late. There's AoE players that will play on until they've spent every resource they collected that game. They spent resource time uh, collecting the resource, so they're going to spend the resource, that's for sure. I think we'll see the Paladins take out this tower. I also have to say that remembering how I was at a low elo... It's very satisfying to hunt someone down and kill them when the pressure's no longer on, right? Like, at this point, Red should know that he's won the game. It's very satisfying to, to just figure out where they are and finish them all. Instead of, you know, being under pressure in the 50-50 situations. That's <laughs> Wait a second. So, so Red's lumberjack found the villagers and is now going to drop a tower here. You can't send a paladin, I guess. That would be too much work. Just drop a tower. Okay. Peasants dealing with other peasants. 
All right, so blue now has a Cavalier. This is going to be blue's last wave. And the Cavalier still do not have the Castle Age armor. He must have lost the Blacksmith because I remember that was on the way. But he doesn't have the Castle Age armor or, of course, the Imp armor. There will be one more fight for blue. I think blue has played a good game. I think there's a lot of lessons to learn from this. Whether you're blue or someone watching right now. See? And then red strategy paid off. Sit in the corner and then slowly expand. And look at the, the line of castles. I mean, the way he played Imp was so well done. I guess red now. I mean, red could, red could almost research spies at this point. Spies isn't going to be that expensive. But yeah, red's just waiting. Break through the gate. And then run through with the conks. Here comes blue. Blue's not ready to give it up yet. Blue also has one... Oh, God. Blue also has one villager going to this corner. Um, I guess blue cannot afford to make a second town center, but blue is running away now. <laughs> I think if every game happened like this, I'd be I'd get tired of it real quick, but I'll take it because this is a pretty good game. Here comes blue. Oh, red. Check the idle villagers. Red might actually spot her. Red's got to be very confused right now on what Blue's doing, or where Blue is. Might have spotted the movement down here. Yep, sending the Paladins to hit the Ville. Smart thinking, okay. And here come the Trebs. Trebs still being protected, of course. They'll take out the stables. Army is just waiting in the shadows here. Pandy, what's up? He says, at last, I found your stream. Hello, hello. All right, so the Paladins come to take the Vill. And Blue decides... A well, Blue's uncertain on what to do with this army. At this point, Blue doesn't have much of an economy, so it's all about microing the army, and he'll kill some Vills. It should alert Red to what's going on. But even if Red were to lose all the villagers that are on this side of the map taking gold, Red would still be able to kill this army, so... Shouldn't really be a big threat at this point. However... This does bring up a point that maybe Blue would have raided at one point. While he was being pressured, if he would have sent units over here, it would have been so good for him. Even just expanding with his villagers, it would have been so good for him. Dropping town centers over here. But it's easy to be tunnel visioned, you know? Blue will win this fight. Here comes Red with more paladins. As he slowly takes out the building. Man, my, my right earbud isn't giving me any audio at times. So it's like in and out, in and out, in and out. But when you have paladins fighting and dying, it's so awkward. <laughs> but here we go. Red's going to win this fight. And that should be the end for blue. So spies is 200 gold per however many villagers the enemy has. So right now, it would be 800 gold for red to research spies. And then he would see everything that blue sees. And everything that blue has been a long one. The blue doesn't want to resign yet. Mom said one more game. It's going to be the end of the units there. This Cavalier is going to go down as well. Blue's now down to five pop. Uh, oh, actually, he's got two alive here. Okay. So he's got three villagers next to the archery range, and he's got two military here. Well played, corner boy, indeed. Yeah, I think, like, Red could definitely optimize things more. I think that a lot of players will, will be able to get military and upgrades in faster than Blue did. And then Blue having the greater economy would eventually push Red back. But <laughs> it, was, it was very well played. And Red calls the GG. I don't even think this is disrespectful at this point. Normally, if someone called the GG for you, it'd be a bit much. But I think he's realizing, like, he knows it's over. So he's saying GG out of respect. Blue gives it back to him. Normally, it's the other way around. You know, normally the person who's losing will say GG. Okay. Archer range will go down. And yes, I guess in the end, Blue just ends up resigning. <laughs> but, if, okay, listen. If you're going to drag it on this long, okay? If you're going to play it out to this point, let him defeat you. I know it says there's zero pop for Blue, but Blue still wouldn't be defeated because the Archer range. 
So let him take out the archer range and defeat you. Resigning at this point seems silly to me, but GG. Well played. How many castles did we have? So these were the three original castles. And then one, two, three, four, five more castles. Sick. And in the end, aggression paid off. And you can see it in the KD, guys. Like, Red has a way of playing Lands Nomad that can work really well. And funnily enough, he, he was able to understand the corner because Blue was in the corner and he was able to punish it. More food and more gold collected. Of course, Blue was like really far behind for the second half of that game. But I think the issue for Blue is not so much the APM, not so much even anything you're seeing here, but it's the lack of army upgrades and the lack of proper army comp. And that's tough with Chinese because if you have a civ like Mongols, let's say, where Mongols have Mangadai and Siege or Mangadai Hussars, it's easier to know because they don't have as many options. But like with Chinese, they do everything really well. You can go Arbs, you can go Chukunu, Halbs, Champions, Rams. So I think maybe that worked against Blue there. They didn't know what to make. But what I would have suggested was continuing to make Halbs and continuing to make Chukunus. And then making sure the upgrades were in. And then I think the, the fights would have been a little bit stronger. <laughs> understand the corner and you understand yourself. No, I think it's understand the corner and you understand your enemy, right? I don't know. Something like that. But yeah, GG. The legend of Ram, man. Ram plays a lot of Lands Nomad. Let me show you. Look at the profile. Lands Nomad, Spanish, Spanish, Spanish. Spanish, Spanish. I think every game is like that on Lance Nomad. Now, I don't know what Golden Pit looks like, but over the last week, this player's been playing only Lance Nomad and only Spanish. So he's developed a unique strategy. He's, he's committed to it, and he plays the way he wants to play the game. And that's what playing video games is all about.